But today, we're gonna talk about something a little bit different. We're gonna talk to people who are either just starting out, or perhaps you wanna cut your costs all the way to the bone. Where would I live if I had $1,000 a month to live on? My number one place to live, if I had only $1,000 a month, I would choose uh, Tbilisi, Georgia. We've been talking about Georgia for many years here, and I think a lot of nomads have started to go to Georgia and have found Georgia as a result of our channel. And it's a very affordable place to live, but why I would choose it for number one is a couple of things. Number one, uh, what I think is, is great about Georgia is uh, the people are very easy to make friends with. And so I have built uh, a lot of lasting friendships with people that I've worked with. They've introduced me to people, I've become friends with them. Just a very hospitable place. And when you need something, people are there to help you. My second place to consider, if you're looking for a big city, uh, would be Istanbul. And that's thanks to the decline of the Turkish Lira against the dollar, the euro, pretty much everything else. And so because of that, rents aren't super cheap, but you can get a relatively affordable place in a, in a nice area of Istanbul. Food is cheap, tea is cheap, there's a lot going on. Uh, you've got water, you've got that big city vibe, but you've also got neighborhoods which feel nice and you can ingratiate yourself into that culture. And I think you can, you can live a, a pretty affordable lifestyle given the decline of the Lira. So if you just want a huge city, uh, that's what I would choose. If you wanted a larger city in Asia, it gets a bit more challenging because a lot of the larger cities in Asia are expensive. And so let's say you like Asia and you're like me, you like a little bit bigger city. Kuala Lumpur is not going to work. Most cities in Southeast Asia aren't going to work. I thought about Hanoi, but then I, I felt that for most people, being able to stay in Vietnam indefinitely would be a challenge. And so where I would probably go is to Phnom Penh, Cambodia, where you can get a business visa and you can renew that every year. It's becoming more difficult for sure, uh, but perhaps still doable. And while Cambodia is on the US dollar, which makes some things more expensive, I think you could get by for $1,000 a month you could rent something relatively cheap. Let's talk about Colombia. I have been a fan of Bogota. I think it's, uh, you know, it could be a bit of a stretch for a thousand bucks. Someone suggested Medellin. Uh, they said, hey, let me, let me push the a thousand bucks up to 14, 1500 bucks. Uh, another guy chimed in and said Medellin. He says, I've lived there for as little as 600 bucks a month. Great food, springtime weather year round. They do call it the eternal spring. And the hottest girls I've seen in my entire life, says Jason. Santa Marta becoming sought after as a destination for tourists and retirees. It is uh, on the beach. You have uh, International Theater Festival, one Jenna Bolton talks about, that's every September. Sea Festival, beauty pageants in July. You have folklore dance presentations all year long. So definitely up on the coast, very lively place. Santa Marta, probably a cheaper place to live than let's say a Cartagena, for example. Let's talk about a place that's long been a nomad tourism destination, which is Namibia in Southwest Africa. So the capital city is where most of the safaris start uh, and it's the first point of entry when you get to Namibia. Uh, well developed city they say, English is uh, well spoken in Windhoek. Uh, also recommended, can't say I'm familiar with Swakopmund, the city's biggest co coastal town and a resort for Namibians on a holiday. The city's German origins are quite pronounced in beautiful old German colonial buildings throughout the city, making an even starker contrast for this town sitting on the edge of the desert. Uh, Ethiopia, I'll tell you a place that I remember sitting next to a guy on a plane a long time ago, maybe going to China or going to Turkey, and he was a, a pilot himself, and he would fly all the flowers from Ethiopia up into uh, to Europe. Addis Ababa is uh, a place that I get, also I'm hearing a little bit more about. Uh, Ethiopia, perhaps uh, not the best place to be right now, but in Addis, as they call it, uh, the commenter says, life is lived very much outdoors on the bustling streets, thanks to the, thanks to the comfortable, temperate weather boosted by months of nonstop sunshine in this East African destination. He's saying, hey, you can live in Addis for a thousand bucks a month or less. One of the great things about Ethiopia, whenever I'm uh, in somewhere with an Ethiopian restaurant, I always go there and I wish there were more Ethiopian restaurants. Very interesting, uh, delicious cuisine. Let's say you want a European beach. I would say there's probably some small towns in the Algarve where you could really stretch it. The problem is the Euro is, is gaining against the dollar. Portugal is becoming more expensive. Maybe if you sold your plasma or something. 
uh, maybe you could pull it off in some tiny town of the Algarve in Portugal. I think that probably the better bet would be Antalya in Turkey, again, because of the decline of the lira. You could probably pull something off, especially if you did a, a year-round lease, uh, living there for $1,000 a month. I think probably the best bet, though, given the, the same concept as the, the Turkish lira decline, would be to live in Buenos Aires, because I think you'd have a great quality lifestyle. The constant financial chaos probably wouldn't bother you that much. In fact, it would benefit you because your dollar would go further as the pace of declines. And you've got a great quality of life. You've got vibrance. You've got just a lot going on. Beautiful city. And I think that would probably win out for me because it has become more affordable as the currency's declined. Where I would go for a more laid back Asian vibe uh, is to Malaysia, not to where I spend time in Kuala Lumpur. You probably couldn't do it even in Penang. Both of those cities are going to be too expensive. But to Kota Kinabalu, KK in Malaysia, on the Borneo side, I think you probably could pull it off. And so you'd have all the, the benefits of the beautiful Malaysian people, pretty easy immigration. They let pretty much anybody come in through numerous residence permits or just through tourist visas. Um, you know, great place to live. I think it has more of that, you know, laid back Asian vibe that you might find, that people might like about other parts of Southeast Asia. A little bit more on the radar of many people. Uh, South Africa, uh, certainly I think that a place like Cape Town, anywhere that you'd want to live in, in Johannesburg, Joburg would be difficult, but someone suggests Port Elizabeth, the gateways to the Eastern Cape region. So you're, you're on the water, you're south, but you're further east. Uh, Well-equipped airport, harbor linking South Africa with other international and national destinations with the rain being weak against the dollar, that has definitely been a cheaper place. Uh, in the past, we had looked at uh, expanding our, our hiring to South Africa, decided against that, but Port Elizabeth was a place that kind of came up as uh, somewhere that you could, uh, could do that uh, and that was more affordable and had more folks looking to, uh, to work with you. So there's a suggestion for someone who wants to potentially spend less than Cape Town. Maputo. African cosmopolitan metropolis, together with its suburbs, including Matola, it forms metropolitan Maputo. Imagine that, a city with about two and a half million people. You have uh, Portuguese, of course, as the official language, various Bantu languages, but you also have Arabic, Indian, and Chinese, so very international place. Uh, definitely not as well discovered but down on the, on the other side, so East, East Africa, Southeast Africa, not so far from my, my Comoros. Actually, pretty close. So Maputo came up as a suggestion. You can live there for a uh, thousand bucks a month. The guy says, "Hey, six hundred bucks a month will get you by." Actually, uh, for him, he's living in a decent apartment, eating out each and every day, eating the best food in the world, visiting the best beaches possible, and driving a decent car. He says, "For a thousand bucks, you can live like a king, have a living maid." Somebody said, "Outskirts of Sao Paulo." Obviously, Sao Paulo, a very expensive place to live. He said, "If you get outside of the city, you can get pretty cheap and amazing food. You can live very affordably." Uh, Florianopolis, a very common nomad destination, uh, called the Magic Island because of its charm and beauty. Someone says, conquers whomever steps foot on its soil. Some of these people should get some, uh, some jobs writing. Fables from years ago tell tales of witches and sorcerers casting spells and curses on locals. Uh, definitely, I, I think $1,000 a month seems a little aggressive to me, but you have seen the Brazilian hey, I, uh, drop dramatically. Uh, in the last year, and so definitely it is getting cheaper to live there if you have dollars, if you have euros. Uh, Peru, Arequipa, uh, someone suggests it's a great place, great food. If you're, in, if you're here in South America, you know, you know that Peruvian food is one of those cuisines. It's like if you go anywhere in uh, the former Soviet Union, you've got Uzbek food, you've got Georgian food. That's what people want. And here in South America, it is Peruvian food. Uh, where is it that you think uh, we should add to our list of great places to live very affordably for someone who's just starting out, they're trying to mine their money, or maybe they just, you know, want to see what it's like to live on the cheap and, and have a nice quality of life. Leave your comment below. If you have lived in one of these places and want to hear your experience, look forward to seeing your comments.